Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Game Development Log Video Diary. Just a quick one this week to update you about what I've been working on, which this week has mostly just been adding various new features into Aquilinox. So firstly, one feature that a lot of you have been suggesting for a long time now is a day-night cycle, and I have now decided to implement that into the game, but I'm not going to be working on the graphical visual part of that just yet, because as I mentioned in last week's behind the scenes video, I'm currently redoing a lot of the engine, so it doesn't really make sense to add any more graphical features until that's done. But what I did do this week was to start implementing the concept of time and days into Aquilinox, and I added in this time and date display at the bottom here, and as you can see, I've made it slide in and out of the screen nicely when you go in and out of the game's menu. So once I'd implemented that concept of time and days and years, I went through a lot of the GUIs and I used it for anything to do with time. So for example, you can see now that the average life length and the growth time and stuff like that are all now specified in terms of years and days. And also in the Entity Info UI, the age is first specified in hours and then days and hours and eventually in years. Also, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work on AI over the next few weeks, and now that there's a day-night cycle, I'm going to be able to give animals behaviours that depend on the time of day. So just as a very quick example for the sake of this video, I made all of the sheep lie down and go to sleep during the nighttime hours, and then in the morning they get up again and get back to their everyday lives. Other than that, this week I was also working on making a few new plant models for the game, so there's now this interesting looking mushroom species, this tall tree here, and finally my new favourite tree in the game, which is this cherry tree. As well as all that, I made a new younger version for the wolf, and I started adding the wolves into the game, and at the moment they just run around fairly randomly using this temporary movement that I've created for them, but when I'm finished with them, I'm hoping that I'll be able to make them go hunting in packs, and have other complex behaviours like that. And while I was working on these wolves, I added in a new feature that I originally was just going to use for debugging, but after using it I thought it might actually be quite a nice fun little feature to have in the game itself, and that is the ability to take control of any animal in the world. So right now I've got control of this wolf, and I can move it around with my keyboard, and at the moment you can only take control of the movement of the entity, but I plan to make it possible for you to do anything that that entity would usually be able to do. Also, when you take control of an entity, you can see that this UI appears on the left here, and this is going to contain the entity's stats and info, as well as information about the keyboard controls for this particular entity. And when you want to stop having control of the entity, you simply have to click on the cross here, and the AI will take over again. On top of all that, I also did a bit of work on the new engine, and I'll be able to show you some progress with that in next week's video. And I've also been preparing the animation tutorial series, and the first episode of that will be out very soon. Uh, once I've uploaded this devlog, I'm going to get to work on finishing that first episode until it's done. So it might be out tomorrow evening, but I've still got quite a lot of diagrams to draw, so I think it's probably more likely to be out on Monday evening. So that is going to be it for this week, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next time.